Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine, a plant-based fitness nutrition company. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Why plant fats are better than animal fats? This is a review of MUFAs, PUFAs, saturated fat, and cholesterol. So before watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, on our Clean Machine Online at YouTube, check out my video on atherosclerosis and cholesterol. So cholesterol, saturated fat, and inflammation combined to create atherosclerosis, which is cardiovascular disease, hypertension or high blood pressure, and even Alzheimer's disease. And guess what food group actually contains saturated fat, cholesterol, and arachidonic acid, animal products, and only animal products. Plants don't have all three of these. Plants can have a little bit of saturated fat, like in coconut oil or peanuts, but they have very little to no cholesterol at all, and they don't make arachidonic acid, period. So it's absent in the plant kingdom. So the only way you can get preformed arachidonic acid is by consuming animal products. And arachidonic acid could be in meat, fish, eggs, dairy, all of it. Okay. So now that we know where these three nasties come from and that they come together to form atherosclerosis, the number one leading cause of death, premature death in the United States and even globally. So if we know these all come from animal products and it's the number one cause of death, what can we do to help reduce this? Okay, so there's two key elements here. One is the in, three, three elements. One, the increase of cholesterol, specifically LDL cholesterol, known as the bad cholesterol or low density uh, like um, lipid. Second is its oxidation. Once you oxidize or increase the amount of oxygen molecules in, it, it becomes fluffy, kind of filled with air, kind of like a Milky Way bar is puffed up, right? It's filled with air. Well, that makes it more sticky. And that brings us to the third negative element that needs to take place for atherosclerosis to happen. And that is for the adhesion or the stickiness of that to adhere to the insides of our endothelial, our blood vessels, our arteries and blood vessels. So when you have all three of those happening, one, increasing the LDL, two, oxidizing it by heating your or cooking your animal foods, which is only where uh, LDL dietary, LDL cholesterol only comes from animal foods. There's trace amounts in plants, but not enough to do any harm. So animal foods produce the LDL cholesterol dietary wise. Our body creates its own, but it creates it for its own purposes. And the more dangerous part of it is when that LDL oxidizes. And that's what happens when you heat animal products. That's when we cook them. Well, cooking used to be a good thing back when we were hunter gatherers um, because it killed the bacteria. Obviously, if you found flesh left over by a carnivore, uh, you want to make sure that you kill the bacteria on it. So cooking that actually was a good way to kill the bacteria. Now we know cooking that cholesterol actually causes it to highly oxidize. Actually, if you put it in the refrigerator and then cook it, it oxidizes even more. So reheating meat and animal flesh really causes oxidation. Oxidation to cholesterol, you can happen in dairy because we pasteurize our dairy. We superheat it. That causes oxidized cholesterol. So two, when that oxidized, it becomes fluffy and sticky. And then three, it adheres to the interior of our lining. Now, when you add inflammation to that, you've got the perfect storm. You've got 
an increase of it, so you've got more in your bloodstream. You've got it oxidized, so it's stickier. You've got it adhering to the walls, which can form plaques. And then lastly, you add inflammation to that, and it can cause the calcification of it. That is where calcium comes over and binds to it and kind of uh, hardens it, what's called hardening of the arteries. So this is where we get the blockages that lead to high blood pressure, stroke or Alzheimer's disease in the brain, cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease in the heart, and erectile dysfunction in the genitals because we're limiting or closing up the blood vessels and allowing less blood. Okay, but what about MUFAs? So PUFAs have been getting all the love, you know? PUFAs are polyunsaturated fatty acids. So PUFAs are your omega-3s and omega-3s are a good thing. They definitely are a good thing. Lots of studies have borne that out. Are they all that? Let's take a look at the research that actually compares MUFAs or monounsaturated fatty acids compared to PUFAs or polyunsaturated, your omega-3, 6, and 9. Okay, so the first study we're going to look at is, I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, that's not the, that's not the study. Here we go. There it is. Uh, the effect of dietary saturated fat or fat saturation on LDL oxidation and monocyte adhesion, that's its stickiness, human to uh, human endothelial cells in vitro. So they're taking a look at it outside the human body so they won't have to go in and invade a human body to find what's going on. Okay, so they're looking at this on a cell based in a petri dish to see what happens on the effect of dietary saturated fat on LDL oxidation, and then the stickiness of it to stick to human endothelial cells. Endothelial cells are what lines our arteries. Okay, so let's dive into that. So consumption of saturated fat, like from animal products, a saturated fat rich diet resulted in higher LDL cholesterol than did consumption of monounsaturated fats. Now, what are monounsaturated fats? Well, they're oleic saturated fats. That's the most common or abundant one. And these are found in, uh, MUFAs are found in most of your seed oils, plant oils, olive oil, things like this. Most of the MUFAs that we get in our diet come from plants. These are monounsaturated fatty acids or called MUFAs. Okay, so what did they find out um, uh, the next? So LDL resistance to oxidation, that is uh, keeping our own LDL from oxidizing was the highest in a MUFA rich diet and the lowest in a polyunsaturated fatty acid, omega-3 rich diet and saturated fat diets. LDL adhesion to endothelial cells was lower during MUFAs than the other two. So MUFAs were actually more effective at preventing oxidation of LDL. Remember, that's step number two. One is raising it, two is oxidizing it. So MUFAs actually protected against oxidation by our own cholesterol, our LDL cholesterol, more than polyunsaturated fats, more than omega-3s, and of course, more than saturated fats. But if that wasn't enough, they write, in conclusion, MUFA diet rich, uh, rich diets benefit plasma lipid levels compared to saturated fat, obviously, but furthermore, the diet resulted in increased resistance to LDL cholesterol cholesterol oxidation, and a lower rate of adhesion in the endothelial cells compared to the other fats, including omega-3s. Now, this is kind of mind-blowing because they thought, oh, you know, omega-3s, lower cholesterol, they do good things for the heart, they do good things for the brain, they protect against atherosclerosis. Well, MUFAs actually do a better job than omega-3s at this. This is pretty interesting. 
this is something that I think needs to get talked about. Okay, so let's jump into the next study. So the protective effect on monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids and the development of cardiovascular disease. So this is going beyond just atherosclerosis, the formation of the blockages in the arteries, but actual cardiovascular disease. So let's see what they find. An enriched MUFA diet, that's monounsaturated uh, um, diet, prevents LDL oxidative modifications and the oxidation of LDL more than PUFAs, more than omega-3s. So this is pretty fascinating. All this research on, on omega-3s for preventing oxidation, and, and these MUFAs are actually doing a better job than omega-3 at keeping it. And remember, most of your MUFAs come from plants. This may be one of the key factors of why plant fats, getting those monounsaturated fats from like olive oil and plant oils are more effective at reducing the risk of both that oxidative damage of the LDL cholesterol and its stickiness to form and cause those plaques. Okay, but it gets more interesting. So the next study says, uh, monounsaturated fat plants. All right, so this is real key here because this study actually goes into the difference because I said most of MUFAs come from plants, but not all. There are some MUFAs that are found in animals. So the next question was the researchers, well, is there any difference between plant MUFAs and animal MUFAs? They probably should be the same since they're both monounsaturated fats. But this study actually teased that out. So this study is called Association of MUFAs from Plants and Animal Sources with Total Cause-Specific Mortality in Two U.S. Prospective Cohort Studies. So they looked at actually two different studies. And they actually looked at mortality. That's how many people died and what the effects were for uh, higher intake of MUFAs from plants as opposed to MUFAs from animals. Now, one would expect, hey, they're MUFAs, they're doing all this great thing at preventing LDL cholesterol, uh, oxidative, stickiness, preventing of cardiovasculars. This should be a good thing. This should mean that MUFAs from any source does that. Wrong. Boom, here it comes. The conclusion of the study says higher intakes of MUFAs from plants was associated with lower total mortality and MUFAs from animals was indicated or associated with higher mortality. What? Same amounts of, and, and same fatty acid, MUFAs, didn't actually cause more death if they're from animals and cause less death if they're from plants. Now that's a big deal, <laughs> but it goes on. It says scientifically lower mortality risk was observed when saturated fats and refined carbohydrates and trans fats were replaced by MUFAs from plants, but not MUFAs from animals. What? So wait a minute. If you take out refined carbohydrates, trans fatty acids, and your saturated fats, all the baddies, all the stuff that causes disease states, right? And replace them with plant MUFAs, you had lower risk of mortality. But if you took out all those refined carbohydrates, took out the saturated fats, and took out of the saturated fats and trans fats from your diet and replaced them with MUFAs, from animal products with animal products, boom, you did not see a lower risk of mortality. What? You would think just those things alone, removing the saturated fats, refined carbs, and trans fats would be good enough to improve overall risk of mortality. But if those MUFAs came from an animal, you got the same risk of death. Oh my God, even with those improvements. You can change your diet significantly, but if you're still eating the animal products, there wasn't a lower risk of 
of mortality. The study goes on to say, these suggest that there are other constituents in animal foods, such as naturally occurring saturated animal fats that may confound the associations of the positive effects of MUFAs when they are primarily derived from animal products. So this is really interesting. It's saying basically that if you get your MUFAs from animal products, they may not have the same positive effects because of all the negative effects that are coming with the animal products you're eating. So it's not just the fact that MUFAs can do a body good. They can. They can help prevent that oxidized cholesterol. They can prevent the increase in LDL cholesterol. They can prevent the adhesion of it or the plaque formation of atherosclerosis, but not if you're eating them with animal products. This is really interesting that you can see that the benefits of plants, whole food plants, the more you can eat a completely whole food plant diet, the more you can get the positive benefits when you include animal proteins, animal products, meat, dairy, eggs, and fish with them, it can take away the beneficial effects of these positive plant monounsaturated fats. This is fascinating. So let's look at this other study. It's 1997 study, mono and polyunsaturated fats, N6, which is omega-6 fatty acids. So they're looking at monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, which is omega-3s and omega-6s, and how they modify uh, LDL cholesterol and decrease human coronary uh, smooth muscle cell DNA synthesis. Okay, let me explain that real quick. So your muscle cell DNA synthesis goes up. Why? Well, it goes up to replace dead or dying or diseased or damaged cells. So your body, like when you work out, you increase muscle protein synthesis, muscle protein synthesis. Why? Because you've damaged some of the muscle and the body has to create more muscle protein synthesis so it creates more proteins to help repair the damage. Well, they can measure that in the heart. So if the heart starts increasing its synthesis, it means there's damage or cell death going on in the heart. So this is an indicator for the scientists to say, well, if there's more synthesis going on, the, the body has actually been damaged to some degree or the cells have been uh, caused to be killed. Okay, so what did they find in this study? Well, they found the MUFA-rich diet uh, reduced the synthesis or reduced the indication of cell damage and cell death and reduced LDL levels and protected LDL from oxidation. This is everything you want. It's reducing cell damage. It's reducing LDL levels and it's reducing LDL oxidation so it can't get sticky and form plaques. So MUFAs are doing this, but what about the others? So they cultured these in a, in a Petri dish and they found from the different groups, heart cell damage was significantly reduced during the MUFA and the uh, omega-6 uh, trials, but not in the omega-3 with respect to a, sat a high saturated fat diet. So MUFAs and omega-6 were protective, were heart protective, cardio protective, and reduced heart cell damage, but omega-3 did not. You know, everybody's taking these omega-3s for heart health, for brain health. And there is great studies out there saying that they do, probably because we're deficient in them. We're not eating a healthy enough diet to get what we need. So when we take a supplement or include more of these omega-3s, we're at least getting back to sufficiency, getting enough for our body's processes. But when you look at the actual effects of these, MUFAs, monounsaturated fatty acids and PUFAs omega-6 were actually better at helping prevent heart cell damage than omega-3s were. So where is the love? 
I'm sure that's what the Mufas are saying. Hey, baby, these Pufas are getting all the love. They're getting all the press. What about us Mufas, the ones that are rich in plants? Okay, so let's look at this last one I'm going to leave you with. Therefore, and this is from this last study, quote, therefore, these combined effects suggest that an oleic rich, acid rich, MUFA Mediterranean diet could be better than omega-6, omega-3 in the prevention of atherosclerosis. Well, there you have it. One, that MUFAs are better than omega-3s and omega-6s, your omegas. Two, that they're not only better, but they're better only when you are eating a plant-centered diet. Because when you include animal-based MUFAs, you do not get the cardioprotective effects. So the plants have it right. And when we eat predominantly plants, we can get the benefits. When we include animal products, we reduce or even eliminate the health benefits and the cardioprotective, the atherosclerosis preventative effects of MUFAs. There you have a whole set of studies. I want you to go ahead and click on them and read them for yourself if you're interested. But I hope this explanation really goes to show you that the plants have it right all along, that the more plants you eat, especially ones rich in polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, uh, which are your nuts and seeds and many of your dark greens, rich in these mono and polyunsaturated fats can help protect us. Once you get these saturated fats from animals, this cholesterol from animals, this arachidonic acid from animals, plants don't make arachidonic acid. Our body can make its own arachidonic acid for inflammatory purposes when we need proper healthy inflammation. Like if you injure yourself, you need an inflammatory response to send over the healing and repairing mechanisms. But we don't need to be ingesting a bunch of arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory. I'll be talking about arachidonic acid and how it, that pro-inflammation, dietary arachidonic acid, which only, only, only can come from animal proteins. That's eggs, fish, dairy, all of it, meat. This is high in dietary arachidonic acid. I'm going to show some studies that show without a doubt that this arachidonic acid can actually build up on the brain, cause inflammatory effects, cause that adhesion of the oxidized dietary cholesterol that you've eaten from cooked animal foods, causing the brain to clog up and leading to Alzheimer's disease and stroke. So it's not just atherosclerosis causing heart disease. It's in the brain. It's in our body. It's hypertension. Hypertension is the number one disease state in the world. And it's because our arteries are closing up from this oxidized cholesterol. And the monounsaturated fats, only specifically when you are eating a plant predominant diet, can give you the benefits to help lower that cholesterol, keep it from oxidizing, and prevent it from adhesion, which is the stickiness when it actually sticks to the insides of the walls of your arteries. That's when it forms plaques. When you combine that dietary arachidonic acid that you're getting when you're eating animal products, you've got the triple whammy going on there. You've got higher LDL, you've got it oxidized so it's fluffy and sticky, and then you've got higher, greater uh, 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 adhesion to the cells, and then you add on the arachidonic acid, which causes the inflammation, and it just packs in that situation. Remember, plants are rich in polyphenols and antioxidants that prevent the oxidation. They're rich in these monounsaturated fats that prevent the adhesion, prevent the oxidation of LDL cholesterol. And like that study that showed side by side, if you got your MUFAs in animal products, the MUFAs benefits disappear. They didn't stop heart attacks. Only when you got those MUFAs from eating a plant predominant diet did you actually experience the benefits of the monounsaturated fatty acids. So let's give some money, uh, our MUFAs some love. 
respect them, understand their place in our dietary uh, complex, try to get them mostly, if not predominantly or even exclusively from whole foods. But in supplementation, there is a place for them and getting enough of them is important. So make sure you're getting sufficient amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids or omega-3s and 6s to meet your body's needs and then make sure you're getting lots of whole food sources of monounsaturated fatty acids from plants. This will help keep you protected, keep you healthy, keep you strong. I hope this uh, helps people out there and I know these are complex subjects but these studies are really painting a very clear picture of why we should be plant predominant, if not plant exclusive. I've been plant exclusive for 38 years. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm lifting more weight than I had when I was in my 30s. It's a great experience to be living life to the fullest at 60. This is what I want for you. That's why I share this information. I want you to enjoy your life to its fullest. Thanks for joining me. We'll be back again with some more great reviews of research.